Hi guys. So yes, I'll be talking about this structure in front of us, and as you can see, yes, you are right. It is a body pumping organ. So this is our art, the human art, right? So the first thing to do when you see the art is to know the anterior from the posterior, know the apex on the base, because that is where you know when the thing is structured. If it is the ventricle, if it is the auricle, if it is the atrium, right? If it is the left or the right. Now this. Right here, as you can see, it is the protruding part or the prominent part. So this right here is our apex of the heart. And this right here, this structure right here, is the base of the heart. So apex, base, right? So now to the structures we can see, that has four chambers, general characteristics actually. That's four chambers, we have the right atrium, we have the right ventricle, we have the left ventricle, and we have the left, this right here is our left atrium. Again, right atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle, and left atrium, right? So, and this right here is our auricle, so this is our left auricle, it's just a year like projection on the left atrium. So this is our right auricle, right? Now, let's go to the um, large arteries of the heart. So this right here that we can see, this right here, is our aorta, our ascending aorta. So if um, a cotton wool can be put into this area, it is ascending aorta. And this right here is our pulmonary trunk. So ascending aorta, pulmonary trunk, right? Now let's go to the interior of the right atrium. The interior of the right atrium. Now, the right atrium is a very often asked part in CPUCHES, in MCQ, and in even theory questions or essay questions. So, we'll just go right ahead to identify the various parts of the interior of the right atrium. So, the right atrium has several openings. One of them, we have the superior vena cover, we have the inferior vena cover, we have the coronary sinus, we have the foster ovalis. And we have our atrioventricular orifice. So this right here is our atrioventricular orifice. And from the name, it connects the atria to the ventricle. So it connects the right atria to the right ventricle. So it's our atrioventricular orifice. Of course, it's guarded by, by a valve. Then this right here is our fossa of valleys. And what do you think this thing does? Yes, you are right. It connects the right atria with the left atria in embryological life. So it helps in shunting blood from the right atria to the left atria. Check out my video on fetal circulation later to get more concepts about the function of this fossa of valleys. But it is one of the fetal shunts in fetal circulation, one of the shunts in fetal circulation. So this is our fossa of valleys. This is our atrioventricular orifice or opening. Then this many two openings. If this was closed, if the, my right atria was not opened, this right here is my SBC. So this open is SBC. And this right here is my IVC. This is my IVC. This is my SBC. And the fourth, the fifth opening is just in this place. As you can see, this structure here, this is my coronary sinus. So this is my coronary sinus. IVC. SVC, ascending aorta, pulmonary trunk, our right auricle. Now, to the other things you can see on the interior of the right atrium, apart from those openings, we have the smooth posterior part and the rough anterior part. So this area we can see right here, all this area is smooth. So this is smooth posterior part. And what accounts for the smooth posterior part it is accounted for by the absorption of the right on or sinus venosus during act formation or during cardiac clipping. So that accounts for the smooth posterior part. Then this part here is our anterior part. So it is rough anterior part. So if I close this out like this, and this is my anterior part. So this that I've closed is the anterior, right? I'm just reflecting it upwards. So this is my anterior part. And what accounts for the roughness is the muscular pectinate or pectinate muscle. Yes, so these are affecting it more so, and it accounts for the roughness of the anterior part of the right atrium. Now, in between the smooth posterior part and the rough anterior part, and often painted or painted in steeple chase, this portion where my forceps is 
touching is referred to as crystal terminalis. So it separates the smooth posterior part from the rough anterior part. So this place is called crystal terminalis. So when you trace this crystal terminalis, when you trace it backwards to the posterior part, as you can see this posture here, it is called the sulcus terminalis. So interior or on inside, it is called crystal terminalis, and on the outside, it is called sulcus terminalis. Yes, so our oracle, our oracle also contains pectinatin muscle or pectinate muscle or muscular pectinatin. So the oracle is also raw. So this is our right atrium. And also, do well to know the biological origin of this structure. Yes, let's go to the right ventricle, what we can find on the interior of the right ventricle. Now this is our right ventricle. There are three things or three major things to look out for in the right ventricle. We have the papillary muscle, the cordate tendine, and the tricuspid valve or the cuspid valve because on the right it is tricuspid valve, while on the left it is bicuspid valve, also called mutual valve. We have three papillary muscle, we have anterior, posterior, and septal. So this right here is our septal, this right here is our posterior, and this right here is our anterior. So this is our anterior papillary muscle, our posterior papillary muscle, and our septal papillary muscle. And what this papillary muscle do is to prevent backflow of blood from the ventricles back into the atria. So this papillary muscle is connected to the hoops of the ventricle via this tendon-like structure, and this is called the caudate tendine. So it's a cord-like tendon structure of the right ventricle. So this is it. We have papillary muscle, cord tendine, this cord-like structure, and the valve itself. So this right here, this right here, let's be from the atria. This right here, can we see? This right here is the valve. Can we say it's opening and closing? So the papillary muscle helps to control the opening and the closing of the valve via caudate tendine attached or connecting the both of them. So these are the, um, the hoops of the valve, the tricuspid valve. And other things that we can see apart from the papillary muscle, the caudate tendine and the valve, we have our bridges and we have our um, trabaculate cane. So this right here, we only have one bridge in the right ventricle and we don't have any bridge at all in the left ventricle. This is our papillary muscle, but this right here is the moderator bridge, moderator band, also known as bridge. So this right here is the moderator band, also known as bridge. We have one in the right ventricle, but we don't have any in the left ventricle. And all this roughened portion, the remaining parts, is referred to as trabaculate cani or trabaculated part of the right ventricle. So this part and the trabaculated part of the right ventricle. So let's go by the interior of the right ventricle again. We have the papillary muscle. We have the caudate tendine, and we have the valve. This right here is the valve. Let's read from the inside. So this right here is the valve, can, as we can see, is the valve. Then we have our moderator band, band also known as bridge, and we have our um, tra um, tra trabaculate cane, or trabaculated part of the ventricle. So this structure, the interior of the left ventricle is similar to the interior of the right ventricle, except that the valve is now two. So it is referred to as bicuspid valve or mitral valve. The papillary muscle is not three, it is two. And we have only two papillary muscles on the left, we have three on the right. And also we don't have a moderator band in the left ventricle. So that's the only difference of that. Then we have our left atria. The left atria, every part of the left atria is smooth, except the oracle. So this is our left oracle. The oracle is what? It's rough. Can we see this? The oracle is rough. So this oracle is rough. And the roughness is also accounted for by muscular pectinacy. So this is our left oracle. It's accounted for by the muscular pectinacy. It can be printed in secret chest. Note that your left oracle is closer to the left atrium and your right oracle is closer to the right atrium. So the left oracle, the smoothness is accounted for by the absorption of the pulmonary veins. 
and they are four for Munai Bay. So you can be asked how many for Munai Bay. Is it Munai Bay can be fruit or, or beans, and you can be asked for structure is it is it Munai Bay. So it's the the smoothness of the left section is accounted for by the pulmonary vein, right? By the uh, by the absorption of the pulmonary. So this right here, this is our aorta, and it's opening into the left ventricle. Our pulmonary trunk is opening into the right ventricle, as you can see. I'm dipping my hand into the pulmonary trunk, and it's coming out of the right ventricle. So the pulmonary trunk opens into the right ventricle. Now, the upper smooth part of the right ventricle, all the area is rough, except this part that is smooth. And this area is referred to as the infundibulum of the, of the right ventricle. So this is the infundibulum. The upper part of the left ventricle is also smooth, right? But in this case, it is called aortic vestibule, not a fundibulum. So for the right ventricle, it is called a fundibulum, while for the left ventricle, it is called aortic vestibule. Now let's talk about the extensor of the heart. Let's talk about the extensor of the heart. So we have two sulcus of the heart. We have two sulcus. We have the atrioventricular sulcus, also known as coronary sulcus, and we have the interventricular sulcus. So you know, from the name coronary, it means like a crown. It surrounds the heart like a crown. So all this portion art that I'm touching is our coronary sulcus. It surrounds the heart like a crown. So this is our coronary sulcus. So we have only one coronary sulcus. And we have two interventricular sulcus. This is our anterior. We have anterior interventricular sulcus. And we have posterior interventricular sulcus. What the interventricular sulcus do basically to separate the two ventricles, while atrioventricular sulcus separate the atrial portion from the ventricle, right? So atrioventricular sulcus round about and interventricular sulcus we have two, anterior and posterior. So we should also note the vessels that run along these structures. In addition to that, so let's note the, be the vessels apart. So the anterior interventricular sulcus, we have anterior interventricular artery. The name of the vessel corresponds to the name of the artery actually corresponds to the name of the sulcus. So anterior interventricular sulcus gives passage for anterior interventricular artery. And the vein that accompanies it is a great cardiac vein. Then posteriorly, posterior interventricular sulcus gives a passage for posterior interventricular artery and then that accompanies it is our middle cardiac vein. So posteriorly we have middle cardiac vein, anteriorly we have great cardiac vein. Then our coronary sulcus, coronary sulcus, around the aorta, around this area, with our right and left coronary artery, they emerge. So this is right coronary artery coming this way. This is our right atria. Right coronary artery comes this way. Left coronary artery comes this way. Right? So left coronary artery, upon um, emergence, it gives off two branches, anterior and circumflex. So anterior interventricular is one that comes down, while circumflex goes to the back. So while the right, it comes this way, gives off marginal artery in front, then comes in the back to terminate at the posterior interventricular artery. And it's something we refer to as left and right dominance of the heart. Usually, our posterior interventricular artery arise from the right coronary artery. But in situations where the posterior interventricular artery arise from the circumflex artery, our circumflex artery is coming this way. If it gives, after when it comes to back, if it gives up posterior interventricular artery, then it, the heart in that case is referred to as left dominance. But if the posterior interventricular artery arise from the right coronary artery as usual, it is referred to as right dominance. So we have right dominance in which posterior interventricular artery arise from right coronary artery, while left dominance, posterior interventricular artery arise from circumflex artery, which is the branch of left coronary artery. Our right coronary artery, the vein that accompanies it is our small cardiac vein. Right coronary artery, small cardiac vein, interventricular artery, great cardiac vein, posterior interventricular artery, middle cardiac vein.
and we have and in addition to all the things you have mentioned, we have silos of the of the um, art. We have two silos. We have the oblique, we have the oblique silos. Oblique silos separate the penile veins, and we have the transverse silos. The transverse silos separate the, the arterial portion from the venous portion. So this area here is our transverse sinus and this portion here that separates the penile vein is our oblique sinus. And what's the significance of this sinus? Transverse sinus the significance is to the, it is used in ligation of great vessels during cardiac operation. So they can ligate great vessels from the transverse sinus when doing operation of the heart. So that's the significance of the transverse sinus. Our IBC is guarded by a valve. This structure here is not really obvious. The valve is not functional, but it's guarded by a valve. This structure here. And the valve is known as eustachian valve, eustachian valve. While the coronary sinus also is guarded by a valve. As you can see, this structure here is our valve of coronary sinus. And it's called tebetian valve. So we have the station valve for IBC and the patient valve for coronary sinus. So SBC does not have any valve at all. SBC has no valve. So it can be asked with simple chest question. This area can be proved and you can be asked that okay, what is the valve that covers the area? And this is the this is the oh, station yeah. valve and this is the station valve. So the things they can paint, they can paint this part to ask what vessels run through it. And this is our anterior interventricular artery, the vein that accompanies our great cardiac vein. This area too can be painted. We have posterior interventricular artery, the vein that accompanies the have middle cardiac vein. We have this portion, this thing can be painted or tied. It is our left auricle, this is our right auricle, this is our fossa ovalis. I'm just mentioning random stuff. This is our fossa ovalis, this is our crista terminalis, our sulcus terminalis, IBC, SBC. And that's basically all for the art, our apex, our base, our anterior, our posterior, our right atrium, our right ventricle, our left ventricle, and our left atrium. And that's basically all for the art. Bye.